Uh, my first talk today is uh, optimizing my SQL without SQL or touching my .cnf. And there is a reason why I called this talk like that, because uh, there is a bit of information about me. Uh, I'm SWE for the last 10 years, and I jo joined Dropbox as SRE in 2015. Um, but uh, despite I'm working as a member of a storage team and I'm working on metadata storage and touching my SQL a lot, I had no DBA experience previously. So I have no idea about how to optimize uh, or speed up my SQL by modifying my SQL configuration. And uh, let's look what is a Dropbox today. So Dropbox today is actually is uh, 500 million users. We have 200,000 business users. And users are uploading 1.2 billion files every day. It's a quite big scale. Uh, we have uh, tens of thousands of servers. Uh, we're, we're located in multiple data centers across multiple continents and multiple countries. And uh, we're storing petabytes of metadata and uh, exabytes of raw data. And that uh, leads to uh, quite uh, obvious uh, problem that we need to optimize our performance because we want to save on the power, we want to save on the number of hardware we are buying, and we want to reduce latency, etc. there. So uh, this talk is covering uh, optimizing MySQL, uh, and uh, mostly we're cover I'm covering how we are building MySQL, and uh, uh, just rebuilding, like, is it, uh, is it make sense to build MySQL in your own infrastructure, or is it just uh, enough to use uh, vendor packages? And uh, uh, for every performance improvements, or like for e every performance change, it's actually reasonable to use benchmarks. And for benchmarks, we're using Sysbench. And this is an example of a configuration we're using for running Sysbench. So uh, we're running several tests with different number of threads, and the uh, number of threads is variable. Uh, in this particular test, we're using a number of threads from 1 to 64. Uh, each test was running for five minutes. Uh, for testing uh, compute, it's enough to run on five minutes. Uh, so uh, we're just using standard uh, Lua OTP read-write test from Sysbench, and uh, for this particular test, we're using master branch, and uh, this is quite fresh checkout of uh, Sysbench. Uh, as far as I understand, there would be a Sysbench talk later this day. Um, so just we're creating 16 tables. Uh, each table contains 1 million rows. Um, so uh, these are testing subjects. This is uh, examples of hardware, not exactly hardware, but uh, systems we're testing on. Uh, we're historically worked for quite a long time on Ubuntu 12.04, and uh, we're still in the process of migrating to Ubuntu 16.04. And uh, both uh, systems have different kernels. We are currently running 3.16 on 12.04 and 4.8 on 16.04. Uh, there's a different set of compilers available on each platform. Uh, on 12.04, these are GCC 4.6, 4.9, and Clang 3.0, which are pretty old by this time. And on 16.04, these are GCC 4.9, which is just backported for backers compatibility to uh, 1604, GC 5.4, and Clang 3.8. So both machines are running this uh, specific uh, CPU, and uh, both machines are completely the same in terms of hardware. So uh, speaking a little bit uh, about built infrastructure, Dropbox, uh, we use Bazel as our build system. And uh, Bazel is uh, tightly integrated in our build system. But MySQL uses CMake as a build system. 
and uh, Bazel is not compatible to open source software. And uh, if you're trying to build something with Bazel and integrate something to your Bazel build, is it uh, auto tools based uh, or CMake based or any other build system, you're literally screwed and you need uh, to do the same or maybe we are going to open source that. Uh, we actually did, uh, we actually wrote a CMake to Bazel converter tool, which <laughs> actually helps us to integrate into Bazel build. Um, it's actually not that hard to write that. I actually did that uh, during one night. Uh, so, uh, important stuff before running any benchmarks and actually made this mistake. On other, one of these machines, uh, and thanks to Ubuntu developers, uh, starting from Ubuntu 16.04, CPU frac scaling governor set to power safe, and uh, your CPU is just in power safe mode. So don't forget to set uh, CPU frac performance governor. And uh, let's start. Uh, so what we are going to optimize is uh, optimize MySQL, just rebuilding it. And uh, one of uh, advanced compiler techniques is profile-guided optimizations. And what is a profile-guided optimizations? Uh, you're literally rebuilding building special build of your binary, which starts collecting training data. And then, when you have enough collect enough training data, you're rebuilding uh, your binary again, and it optimizes branches. It uses better branch prediction. It uh, relocates code paths. It, it has better inlining because it actually knows statistics on how the code is used. So uh, it usually requires to rebuild, but not in the same, uh, not not uh, in every case. Uh, in case of Clang. Um, and as far as I understand, thanks to, to Google, uh, Clang can use perf data. So you don't need to rebuild. You can just collect perf data and build using perf data, which is a bit easier. So a com common mistake, uh, collecting profile data from unit tests. Don't do that, because unit tests usually are checking corner cases, and you don't want to optimize for corner cases. So literally, your code would be fast on some corner cases like return exception, but not in any other case. And uh, let's see how we are building uh, with GCC. So to build a profile guided optimization build uh, with GCC, we have two flags. One of them is um, uh, to enable profile data collection. It's F profile generate. There's another. A variant of this flag which uh, allows you to set the output dir where you want uh, to write profile data. And the uh, second flag is uh, f profile use. It actually, when you're rebuilding your binary, it uses profile data. And in case of MySQL, it doesn't work. And it doesn't work because MySQL is multi threaded application and uh, profile data would have incorrect counters. And in order to fix that, uh, we need to use F profile correction, which would tell GCC just try to fix counters for us. And uh, uh, bad uh, news for Ubuntu 12.04 users it doesn't work with GCC 4.6 and 4.9. And uh, flux are working, but uh, PGO doesn't work for MySQL. And uh, yeah, that's that's about GCC. So another compiler we have in distribution is Clang. And Clang is uh, uh, set, set up a bit different. It has a, a little bit different set of flags. And uh, it's F-profile generate. But uh, before they introduced uh, uh, command line arc uh, uh, back compatibility of GCC, it was called a bit different. It was called uh, F profile instar generate, and uh, there is an interesting flag which is F profile sample use, which is exactly the, the flag I mentioned to use perf data. So uh, bad news again for Ubuntu 12.04 users: no PGO support and Clang 3.0 at all. Like 
at all. So uh, we rebuilt uh, MySQL with uh, PGO and uh, we ran tests with Sysbench and uh, we did uh, several passes so we don't have any uh, fluctuations in our tests. And uh, here results for 12 of I don't know how the colors are looking here, but I can I can tell what's there. So um, we have uh, Glenn Free Zero is a winner. Uh, it it uh, produces binary with highest throughput, and throughput is uh, something about 10 percent more on using building of Clank than building of GCC. <clears throat> but in the same time, both GCC and Clank here are pretty old. But uh, if you're stuck um, with 1204, <clears throat> and you shouldn't do that, uh, because 1204 LTS ends uh, this April, uh, it could be a good uh, choice to just rebuild uh, with Clank 3.0 and get like 10% uh, performance improvement. And uh, here, how response time looks. And uh, it is the same, so the lower is better. And uh, Clank produces uh, lower latency binaries as well, which is which is good. So that slide is more interesting. Uh, here we have uh, uh, Sysbench uh, results for 1604 builds, and on 1604 we're actually able to use uh, PGO, and uh, there's a bit uh, interesting and. Uh, we haven't fi found out why, but uh, GCC 5.4 produces really bad results. Uh, maybe something's broken with our compiler, and uh, not in, not the problem of GCC, but of our build infrastructure. But we decided just to include that, to be honest. And uh, uh, GCC 5.4 with PGO produces uh, pretty good results. It's generally 20% faster than just GCC 5.4. And uh, you can achieve that just just rebuilding uh, uh, your MySQL binary using PGO. And uh, any, every other compiler is uh, a little bit slower, but uh, just using PGO, uh, you can achieve 20% performance improvement. And uh, here are latencies. So, looking at it, uh, lower, the lowest part uh, is uh, GCC 5.4 PGO build. Uh, for that test, we did not uh, try the uh, Clank PGO builds, so we don't have uh, Clank data here yet. But uh, it would be interesting to compare Clank PGO build uh, versus uh, GCC PGO build. But latencies are, latencies are also something like 20% lower for PGO builds. Uh, so this is one of uh, interesting uh, optimization techniques when you are not just you are not touching MySQL configuration at all and you're speeding up your MySQL. Uh, another interesting advanced uh, compiler optimization technique is uh, uh, link time optimizations, uh, also known as uh, full program optimization, and uh, it is supported by both modern GCC and Clang, but uh, MySQL code base, oh, uh, MySQL code base is not LTO compatible at all. And uh, a little bit, what is the LTO? LTO is uh, uh, when compiler, instead of producing object code in compilation units, it produces intermediate representation and linker does actual compilation and uh, optimizations. So you're post postponing uh, actual optimization to the link stage, and link linker sees uh, all object files and knows how how to inline, like it can inline code from other object files, which is not available without LTO. And, uh, but actually it's easy to fix in code base, and uh, we're going to start working on that pretty soon. So. We're going to send uh, patches for that. 
And uh, it would be interesting to see uh, LTO results on uh, other projects. So we're using, we saw something, something about like 5% performance improvement, so which is also interesting. And uh, so that's basically it what we accomplished by this time with optimizations. We, we have like 20% performance improvement just rebuilding MySQL. And uh, we have actually more ideas what we want to do next. Uh, we're working on, uh, because we were using Sysbench as a training data for PGO, and uh, we're testing with Sysbench again, we actually plan to start using uh, real world training data. And uh, for that, we are going to start, we actually started contributing to Percona playback, and we're going to just play back uh, the real production traffic we have uh, in order to optimize our builds for production. And uh, another interesting thing that it leads to interesting question that we don't have uh, only one single database. We have many databases and uh, workload profiles are different. And we, we haven't decided what to do here uh, because uh, it would be interesting to build to have some some generic training data we can uh, use on every production database. Uh, so another interesting option is building with uh, M Arc uh, native. I have a mistype there. So it uh, it allows compiler to use uh, latest extensions like AVX or AVX2, and uh, usually it just uses some generic compiler set uh, compiler. Uh, CPU instruction set, but with that you can also achieve uh, like three, four percent of performance boost. And uh, another interesting thing that uh, when we are running um, MySQL in production, we're usually usually running one single instance, multi-threaded instance on single machine. But we actually see in perf data uh, to see QPI interface, and uh, usually when you have uh, multi-core uh, machines, you have um, uh, usually you have two slots and uh, CPUs. Uh, if you, if one CPU want to access the memory from another CPU slot, you, it uses uh, QPI link, and uh, it's actually slower than using local memory. Uh, not significantly slower, but still we see uh, like uh, three four percent here. And uh, another option, we we probably would run two. MySQL instances, uh, two shards on single uh, hardware machine, and uh, each bound with a uh, new CTL to each slot and to each uh, memory slot. So that's that's it. Uh, questions? Yes. So could you repeat the question? Yeah. Could could you repeat the question? Do we have some public Debian package with? Uh... Oh, so uh, yeah. Like uh, as I said, we are not using Debian packages for our built infrastructure. We're using it with, with Bazel. So, we're, unfortunately, we're not uh, we're not building that packages. So yeah, it. Uh, so the the question is how PGO works. Uh, so PGO build uh, <coughs> collects data on uh, branch users, and uh, it writes that into uh, GCDA files in case of uh, GCC, and uh, using that statistics, it just writes the statistics. It can uh, understand uh, which branch branch branches are occur earlier, which are not. Yes, yes, it's exactly about, it's, uh, about writing object code. Like 
So we are collecting basic events. Uh, I can, yeah, I, I, I don't recall correctly what is the size of per data we have, but we're we're also running a top on the machines. So, yeah, okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Will you be around? So Maxim will be around, and so if you have questions, just take him, go outside, and ask him so many questions. Pay him a beer, and it will speak for a full day, right? <laughs>